Hello everyone, this is Harv here, um, video audio stuff. Now, um, welcome to my Sony A7S II review, overview, opinion, basically, is what this is. Um, now, I, what, the reason I wanted to make this is because there are so many reviews out there already, uh, and a lot of them are not what I'm looking for in a review. A lot of them is, it'll be a guy stood there just reeling off the fucking facts, like, it's a 12.2 uh, megapixel sensor, full frame, low light king, all that kind of stuff, you know it. If you've clicked on this, you know that stuff already. You don't need me to tell you that. What I'm going to offer is um, my opinion, my experience of using this camera in the real world for paid jobs, alright? So, what I want is opinions. I want to know what someone thinks of it. One thing to note, um, if you haven't already seen Philip Bloom's amazing review of um, the original A7S, uh, love that guy. Go there now, come back once you've once you watched it. Um, it's an outstanding review, a lot of it applies to the version 2 of this camera, so uh, it's amazing, check it out, do it now. So what I'm not going to talk about in this review really is um, the fact that it's the low light king. Um, I'm also not going to bang on about um, the menu system, which everyone seems to complain about. Just learn it, it's not a big deal, it's like anything, you just, you just got to learn it. Um, it didn't take me long, just get over it, seriously. Um, the battery life, I'm not going to talk about that. Just buy more batteries, seriously, they're so cheap. Honestly, why is this a big deal? I'm also not going to bang on about the placement of the record button. Who cares, seriously? Yes, it's on the right hand side on the handle, and Sony have said no, they're not going to assign it to the shutter button. Just <laughs> get over it, alright? It's not a big deal. For an amazing demonstration of uh, this camera's low light uh, capabilities, there's only one you need to watch, and that is Philip Blooms. He actually made uh, a, a short film um, which was actually part of his big review, um, and he called it Now I See, and um, again, I'll pop it in the description, so do check that out, because it's just, it's, it's a better demonstration than I could possibly do, so just do it, it's awesome. So I, I bought this camera in November 2015 um, and I've used it for a, a little while um, doing paid jobs and um, I just wanted to, to tell you what, what I like and what I don't like about it and um, this is all stuff that I kind of wanted to know before I bought it, you know, it's, it's people's experience of actually using the camera in the real world. So let's swiftly move on to what I don't like about this camera. Dislike number one is Sony glass. Now, don't get me wrong, I actually really like the glass. I know that I've just contradicted myself, but the, the actual optics, the actual Sony optics, most of them are pretty good, and to be honest, on video, uh, I mean, I, I would have just bought their 16-35 um, f4, but I mean, the, the lens I'm shooting on right now is a 16, is a 16 to 28 Tokina for a Canon mount, um, and I'm adapting all my lenses. The reason that I don't like Sony glass, nothing to do with optics, is because the majority of them are focused by wire. Mmm, tea. And what this means, if you're a serious uh, filmmaker, is you, you can't pull focus. Well, you can, but it's a really clunky way of, pu of pulling focus and a lot of people complain about it. If you're not sure what focus by wire is, it's worth reading up about, but um, essentially means that the focusing system is completely electronic, so you can turn it a little bit and it'll turn slowly, or you turn it fast and it'll focus way past where you want to be, um, and it's no substitute for a real, proper, focusing system on, say, one of the Canon lenses or, you know, the Takina that I'm using right now. So Sony, look, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to you. I would buy your lenses. Seriously. I really would. Um, but focus by wire. Just <sighs> sort it out, please. Sort it out. And this leads on to my second complaint of this camera. Yeah, it's about autofocus again. That's the really frustrating thing about using Canon lenses, adapting lenses to your Sony camera. I would love to have the ability to, to autofocus. Now, by that I mean 
you know, you camcord a style, you point at something, it, it moves into focus, much like um, the Canon 70D does that brilliantly with Canon lenses, obviously. You can do this with Sony lenses only. But someone correct me, okay, someone's going to be commenting right now, I guarantee, but it seems to me that this should be possible with Canon lenses. Complaint number three. Now, this is more to do with photography, which I don't do so much of, but I still enjoy it. And again, it's to do with adapting lenses. I know a lot of people who are going to do this, so um, this is important, and it's things that I kind of... I wish I'd known. My complaint is this. If you are buying Canon lenses and adapting them to this camera, or its predecessor, the A7S, don't bank on being able to use any kind of autofocus in photo mode, in any photography mode. To be honest, you're going to be living in manual and using the, the peaking function. The autofocus system in the original A7S was abysmal, uh, and this one is not much better. You know, it, it just hunts and hunts. So really, I mean, if you if you do need a camera that can do photography, to be honest, I mean, I'm still using my Canon 5D Mark II for photography. I don't bother with this, even though I think the the sensor is far superior in this A7S II. My fourth dislike of this camera is the rear screen. There's no excuse. This camera, I, I mean, it cost me two and a half thousand pounds, and I just think the screen is um, below par. You'll be amazed how difficult it is to really nail that critical focus, even when you zoom in. Now, I'm not one of these guys that I don't really care that it doesn't flip out. You know, that's that's not really what I do. I mean, to be honest, I'm actually um, I'm going to be um, upgrading to an external monitor um, so that I can really nail focus. So I just don't get it. I don't understand why Sony have released you know such an amazing camera with such a, an average screen. It should be so sharp. So yeah, frustrating. The fifth thing that I don't like, look, this is nothing to do with the camera. I really love it. It's more the way the clients perceive your equipment. If I'm doing a shoot, and I've got my Canon 5D set up and my A7S II set up, on, both on tripods, everyone assumes that the Canon 5D is the more professional camera. And then I explain that actually it's the other way around, um, and um, it's just annoying. I, and it shouldn't annoy me, but it does. It's a small thing, and actually I quite like uh, a, a chunkier body, so maybe next time, maybe the Mark III, Sony, you listening? You listening? And now onto the likes. Um, luckily, there's a there's quite a lot of them. Number one, S log two and three. Oh my god, this has been a revelation for me. Um, I've never had it before, and it's just changed everything. For those of you not sure what I'm talking about, uh, S log is a way of shooting with a very flat profile. So it means that your contrast is very low, your saturation is way down, and it basically means that... So when it actually comes to grading your footage and giving it a cinematic look, your footage will be so much more detailed uh, in the shadows and the highlights. Um, I'm actually shooting at the moment in S-Log2, um, and this is what it looks like, ungraded. Um, pretty horrible, right? But, you know, let's bring the grading in. Ah, uh, yeah. The other thing you've got to remember about S-Log2 and S-Log3 are uh, when you first bring them into Final Cut or Premiere Pro, whatever program you're using, um, you might be worried because S-Log2 and S-Log3, because it brings up the level of all your shadow areas, um, your footage looks um, I mean, pretty um, pretty nasty, really, quite, quite noisy, um, and so many people complain about this. It's like, well... What the fuck do you expect, you know? So, um, at the moment I'm shooting at um, uh, ISO 5000, which I never would have done with the Canon. It would look like pea soup. But then as soon as you grade it, it just fades away. The other thing to remember is that a lot of people are going to be using programs like Neat Video or some other noise reduction software. Personally, if you haven't tried Neat Video, it's, uh, it's a godsend um, and it's wizardry. It's some sort of witchcraft. Something else to remember is if you are pairing this camera with, say, uh, a, a Canon or Nikon or something like that, and if you can, if you really want to use S-Log2 or 3, um, it's not going to pair well with a camera that doesn't have that function. Um, I mean, I'm, I pair mine with my Canon 5D Mark II, and it's frustrating when I bring it into post, and, um, you know, I love all the footage coming from the A7S, and the 5D Mark II is just... 
one's great, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking it, but it just doesn't have the dynamic range or uh, the detail or anything like that, and it, it just can't match the Sony, it's just completely unmatched. My second like for this camera is the slow motion. Uh, oh my god, it is incredible. Such, an, uh, such a stunning image from the slow motion. Yes, it's only 1080, but who cares? The thing to remember with slow motion is it does crop your image by two times. Um, this means if you're using a 50mm lens, for example, it will end up being 100mm. At the moment I'm shooting at 16mm, and this is what a two times crop looks like at 32. It crops by quite a lot, but then it's really easy to get around this. You have to just make sure you've got a wide angle lens on the go. Um, the other thing you have to remember is with the two times crop, you're also introducing more noise, uh, inevitably. And actually, if you are shooting in uh, S-Log3, for example, the minimum ISO in standard 4K mode is actually 1600, which is fine totally usable, you know, uh, that I use that most of the time. However, in slow motion mode, it doubles, because your sensor area halves, and your ISO has to increase, you know, because you're getting half the amount of light on the sensor. So yeah, I mean, your minimum ISO is going to be 3200. In this camera, it's not so much of a problem, and particularly, again, if you're going to use something like neat video, not a problem at all. Third thing I like about Sony a7S II Another really big surprise about this camera actually is the internal mic. Now I know, you know, most people would never use it, I would never use it on the Canon, that's for sure. Horrific. But I'm so surprised about this one, I mean, I, I am gonna swap to probably using my, uh, my Tascam DR40 for these videos, but for the moment, it's fine. I'm close enough to the camera, I mean, I can touch it, I mean, within arm's distance, um, and it sounds fine to me, surprising anyway. Number four, you know, I really like all the custom buttons. I can set things up completely how I would like them. Okay, here's the back view of the A7S. As you can see, you've got custom one, two, and three. Custom button one, I've got set to my zoom. Custom two, I've got set to white balance. And custom three, I've got set to level of peaking. You can set it to low, mid, or high. So on the AFMF button, I've got my zebra levels. On the function button, I've got my quick controls. By hitting down on the control wheel, I can access my gamma assist, which is helpful for setting exposure in S-Log2 and S-Log3. And finally, custom button four, I've got set so I can change my picture profile. So here's some more footage for you to cream over. To sort of sum it up, you know, I did list quite a few things I didn't like, but you know, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I love this camera. It's the best that I've owned by a long way, and I think, you know, if you whether you buy this one or the original A7S, um, you're not going to regret it. If you're doing any kind of video, you'll love it. Seriously, I wouldn't buy it at all if you want to be doing any stills. I just, it's not worth it. Maybe if if you intend to buy Sony glass then maybe, but I wouldn't bother to be honest. Don't buy for stills. If you're going to spend that kind of money, uh, seriously, go and buy the A7R2 or something like, or pick something up like a Nikon D810 uh, for not very much. I mean, the price of those these days is plummeting, so get something like that. This is not for stills, seriously. Seriously? So my plan for this camera is to keep using it, and um, I am going to retire my Canon uh, 5D Mark II for all video use, just because I just don't feel like it's uh, it's not very 2016. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm, I'm planning on buying one of the original A7S um, cameras, and that will be my B cam, um, and uh, then I'll be able to pair them. 
much better. The shots will match a lot better. Uh, the white balances inside will be I, will be really similar. The picture profiles I'll be able to match both of them in S Log 2, which will be lovely. And I won't have to bother with two different battery types and that kind of thing. So, um, so I hope this was helpful. You know, more than anything else, I didn't want this to be uh, any kind of bullshit review. I just wanted to give you the my honest experience with using it. Um, now, like questions below. Um, if I get enough, maybe I'll do another video answering them all. So just get them in. Or maybe I'll look at I'll look at the questions in a few months' time and just uh, and maybe compile a video of responses. So um, get them in now. All right, thanks. Uh, it's been fun.